Mr. And we're going live, 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 and we're on the air. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. Bruce is scrambling here. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome to Traveling with Bruce. I'm just adjusting my seat. Watch me jump up and down. I got an airplane. How you doing out there? Uh, I feel like I'm Stormy Daniels in the Donald Trump movie. Okay. So anyway, um, hi. Welcome to Saturday show, 2 o'clock Eastern. Uh, it is April the 7th, 2018. And I, I thought today would be just a nice and easy Saturday show, uh, you know, talk to my peeps about cruising and what's going on. And uh, I, I've just been just just going nonstop. I'm on, I'm on Facebook like crazy. I'm on Twitter and, and uh, sending messages back and forth and gathering all kinds of information on what's going on out there. I'm just trying to <laughs> calm down and get ready for the show. Uh, messages have already been coming in from the, from the channel. How are you guys? Uh, it's nice to see you um there we go goodness gracious uh where am i oh yeah it's it's my live stream it's my live stream on youtube this is bruce with traveling with bruce uh for those of you who have never been here before uh welcome to uh, my show um i'm getting a whole bunch of new subscribers these last couple of days and uh, very energetic uh uh participants and of course my my regulars who are just you know you guys are great getting all kinds of uh comments of encouragement and uh uh, and uh, did you see this? Did you hear about that? Did you saw that? The news is coming in from all kinds of thoughts. I, I love it. Um, I didn't realize this, but um, I was on I was I was just on my Facebook uh, feed on about what, twenty minutes ago, and uh, I, I found <laughs> this is how new this is how new I am at this stuff. I found uh, on my Facebook page that apparently um, you know people can insta insta message me, you know. There's this thing called Insta messaging. It's all new. <laughs> it's a new thing. Uh, uh, when you're born in the 50s, everything is new. And uh, and uh, I had like six or seven people trying to talk to me. One of them was someone from ABC News in New York. <laughs> yeah, I just got back to her. <laughs> says, yeah, I'm here. How can I talk to you about? What, what do you want to know? <laughs> So I sent a message and we'll see if there's more contact. I, I don't know. Maybe they're picking it up or they wanted a comment or uh, I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, anyway, uh, people are finding me somehow, some way through, you know, whatever it means. And, uh, and uh, I'm just, I'm just doing my best to get back to everybody and say, hi, I'm here. And I'm more than happy to uh, converse with you and compare notes and we'll see what's going on. For those of you who've never been to this channel before, uh, I'm Bruce with Chopping with Bruce. I live in Creston, BC in Canada, three miles north of the US border. And normally I can see the US, United States of America from my living room right here. Uh, but we just start, it just started snowing 15 minutes ago and it's getting socked in. So um, I can't see America. It's three miles just over here. I can't see it. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to have one of those yucky days today here in Creston, BC, but it's like 33 degrees, 35 degrees. It's okay. We can handle it and uh, we'll be fine. I love talking about cruise ships. I love talking about cruise ship holidays, cruise ship lines, new ships coming out, people who are having great vacations. I love comparing notes with travelers. I love um, getting advice, giving advice on, on how to have a great trip, how to have a great cruise. Uh, I talk to my my uh, regulars on this format. Uh, I do eight live streams a week, Monday to Friday, uh, five o'clock Eastern every day, and on Tuesdays, Thursdays, I throw in a second show at eight o'clock Eastern time. That's seven right there, and then Saturday, right here, right now, two o'clock Eastern time every Saturday. For those of you who work Monday to Friday, can't see me live. Maybe you can catch me on the Saturday feed. And uh, we have a lot of fun here. It's generally a very light channel. I'm, I'm not one of these Geraldo Rivera type guys that just, you know, are, are a heavy or anything like that. I'm not like Mike Wallace on CBS or anything like that. The late Mike Wallace on CBS. <laughs> Although I saw her, 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 Pretty interesting eye candy to watch that. I don't even have to listen to it. I just put it on mute and just look at him. <laughs> I'm just an old man, I guess. Anyway, Revolvo's look at Revol Geraldo. He's looking old. <laughs> Although he was smiling, sitting on the couch, just smiling because they were reviewing his new book and they were plugging it for him. But I generally don't watch Fox very often. I, I, I like watching other shows. But generally, I got to tell you, 
since starting this channel, uh, I started this channel last August, uh, August 17, to August 2017, I started this channel. I'll get my words up. How, 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 how. Um, I watch so much less television now because I'm so busy doing this. Uh, my pre-show research, my on-air work, my post-show uploading and everything. And then the remainder of the time, just making sure my channel is you know up to speed and, and I'm promoting my videos on my channel. Uh, I bet you uh, I've gone from uh, six or eight hours a day of television watching before I was a YouTuber. And I don't know if I watch three hours a day anymore or even two hours a day. It's, it's stunning to me that as a lifelong you know, television tuber. I'm now a you YouTuber, <laughs> and uh, and I, I watch YouTube videos, and of course I'm I'm on you know other I, I'm on media sites. Like I watch you know I read various newspapers online and you know all that stuff. But yeah, live television has just gone down, 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 down. It's it's stunning. It's just stunning. I don't miss it. Uh, I don't miss it because I don't get all the commercials, and I'm just getting content, and uh, it's quite amazing. Talking about my channel. Um, I have a bunch of playlists out here uh, with my channel about cruising, uh, getting a good deal. How to if you're a new cruiser, like if you're a newbie, never cruised before, you've come to the right place because this channel talks to new cruisers all the time, and I have playlists on getting a deal, how to pack, what you can take on board, how to save money once you're on a cruise ship, all of these you know how-to type videos, and then I make videos about uh, people's experiences and or uh, you know news of the day. Uh, what I call issues <laughs> and uh, we've been following here on this channel uh, stories about the MSC Seaside about the stinky cruise uh, we've been following the uh, the fist fights that were happening in Australia on the uh, Carnival Liberty uh, we were on top of that story and now now what are we on top of we're on top of this Norwegian Sun uh, construction cruise story that just isn't stopping um, I was on this story well, five six days ago, I started. I started. I think I started with it. Uh, I caught wind of it uh, when I first found out about the the ship going in for dry dock. I kind of you know I started talking about it, but then I started hearing the cruise from hell in the Panama Canal, and I'm digging into that, and I have come up with just a million things about this. And I just more. I it's like I said yesterday. This story is like an onion. You peel off one layer, and there's another layer, and another, and each one is unique unto itself. And uh, I've got all kinds of additional info for you uh, to just kind of keep you apprised of what's going on. And people are reaching out to me from the uh, Facebook page that are uh, that have they banded together to, you know, try to get their money back from this nightmare cruise. Uh, I've been reaching out to those folks. Some of them are reaching out to me, which I really appreciate. I'm really happy and grateful they are because I want to get this story out. And if I can be as accurate as possible, it would really help because I don't want to guess. I really want to be talking from a standpoint of what I'm knowing what I'm talking about. Okay, back to my channel for just a sec. Uh, like I said, it started in March, and here we are in uh, April. April 7th is going to be eight months. Uh, next week will be eight months that this channel has been going. Um, and I had zero subscribers. I'm not sponsored. I am not a travel agent. I'm not paid to do this. I'm not employed by a cruise line. I'm my own independent guy. And uh, I had zero subscribers when I started. And at the moment, uh, when I got off on the, I uh, got off, of got off the air yesterday. I can't, really can't talk today. When I finished my show <laughs> yesterday, I had 1,621 subscribers. Okay, 1621. Right now, I just took a look. 1641. 20 more. So uh, a week ago, I was getting five, 10 subscribers a day. The last three, four days, it's 20, 30, 20, 40. They're coming in. Uh, people are reacting to the story. They like what they hear. They, I, think like the honest angle i think i'm trying to give the story and uh they're they're enjoying what we've been enjoying already those of, and i'm talking to my diehard uh, watchers who watch me almost every day and have been following me now uh for those of you who don't know and and those of you who do know uh my channel uh was a monetized youtube channel as of october of last year i reached 10,000 views on this channel you know just starting out with nothing and I got started getting paid by uh, YouTube for advertising that was on this channel. And I started getting, oh, 12 cents a day, <laughs> nine cents a day, a quarter. <laughs> it all depending on how many views you have, how long your videos run, how many minutes of watch time you have. And by December, right around the end of the year, I started to get two, three bucks a day from, from YouTube, which is like you know, 60, $100 a month, you know, Ooh, okay, a couple, you know, couple of bucks. 
a couple of hot dogs at Costco in Coeur d'Alene, which you regulars know I love, or at least my wife, the Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife that I have, which we refer to as Jen around here. Jen loves the hot dog at Costco. But um, January, just around the January 17th, uh, YouTube changed the policies on how they pay and how they monetize YouTube channels. And the deal was uh, completely different now. You have to have at least 1,000 subscribers. You have to have 4,000 hours of watch time. Then you can qualify for advertising. And at that moment, when they announced that on the 17th of January, I had 225 subscribers, <laughs> not even close to 1,000. And I had about 3,400 or 3,500 minutes of watch time. I was only a few, uh, 3,500 hours of watch time. Sorry. It's only a few hundred hours away. And uh, I made a video that day because uh, I was just I was stunned. I, was, I couldn't believe it that they would just in one, just like that. You're no longer you no longer qualify, and not only do you no longer qualify, you got to reach these parameters to get to get back in. And uh, I knew the watch time I would get that. I had that done within about eight days of that announcement. I was over the four thousand hour, but the thousand subscribers was the the biggie. And I put the word out to all my followers at that point who, you know, I thought I had a ton then, <laughs> 225 subscribers. But at that point, 90% of my viewers were not subscribers. They were just following my channel. And I begged people, please subscribe to the channel, hit the button here, hit the button here, hit the bell notification icon. And it's free. And you'll get notified every time I do a new video. And people responded like crazy. And within like four days, I was at six almost 550 subscribers going on the 600 and the race was on for a 30-day window i had 30 days to get to a thousand otherwise i'm kicked out out and um on the 19th of february the day before deadline day we hit a thousand subscribers where i was on the air doing my thing and my viewers wouldn't let me hang up the the channel I said no you can't stop until you hit a thousand because you're at like 950 right now we're going to do it on the air and we did it <laughs> A two hours, 20 minute show, and we reached a thousand subscribers. Anyway, that was all great. Uh, the bad news is that uh, it still put me in a demonetized state because YouTube stated that as of January the 17th, those new parameters were locked in and there was no grandfathering, and you had to earn your way back in. And if you did get to a thousand subscribers and the 4,000 hours by the 20th of February, you would be an automatically, you would automatically be in for the review process, which gave me the impression, and I think a lot of other YouTubers, well, then you know, like within a week, we should be remonetized because the first time I reached, when I reached 10,000 views, it only took a week and we were monetized. Well, it's week eight now. Eight weeks, I haven't been paid by YouTube. Not a dime, nada. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, to say the least, it's incredibly uh, uh, frustrating. But I understand it. I get it. Uh, they have been cleaning house of a lot of these ne'er-do-wells who are stealing copyright materials and uh, posting insensitive stuff. And uh, th th there's just a lot of garbage out there. And uh, I say, clean it up. Go ahead. Clean it up. I'm fine. I will continue doing what I do, whether I'm paid by YouTube or not, because I love doing this channel work. Uh, but one of the benefits of hitting a thousand subscribers on the 19th of February was my channel became eligible and is still eligible for me to receive what's known as super chat donations. And that is where viewers can make a donation to my channel at their beck and call, their will, uh, for any amount they see, feel free to donate, uh, on my live streams. And since I'm on eight di times a week, uh, I get super chat donations from time to time on these ch shows. So once in a while, you may see a bar go across your chat screen where you're typing in to say hi to me. You might see a little bar go across that says $2 or $3 or $5. And that's just viewers sending me a donation to you know keep on going because I don't have any other form of income. This is my full-time job. This is what I do. My wife has a day job. Jennifer, she's got the day job. Well, she's the actress. I mean, you know, she's loaded. I mean, I... You know, when you're with a superstar like Jen, got it made. So that the husband, the hubby gets stayed home and play on YouTube. The wife goes out and does the grunt work. So it's all good. Although she is saying to me, you know, even as a high end quality, no, not you know, knockout actress, it would be kind of nice if you kind of started pulling a little more of your weight. <laughs> and I keep saying it's YouTube's fault. I'm just waiting for them to re monetize me. Uh, the last word I had from YouTube was end of April. They should be through it all. <laughs> which means 
that could mean for me 10 weeks or 11 weeks of non-monetization time. And everybody else. I'm not the only – they're not picking on me. It's everybody else. And so I'm just um, being straight with you guys. I don't get paid by the cruise lines. I'm not a travel agent. Uh, I don't make any money getting people on cruise ships or anything like that. It's all I have to do it myself. And so there's my my confessional. You know where I'm coming from. I have 1,641 subscribers, and I got a zillion more people who are finding me and watching me, and I love it. And they're from all over the world, and I welcome all of you. Now, the routine here is when I do one of my live streams, my regulars start talking to me. And If you're watching this show, you're probably noticing the little chat thing move along. Uh, I've always encouraged you to uh, say hi to me if you want. Uh, you don't have to. You can just watch uh, Incognito and just you know, stay in the shadows and watch what he's doing. Uh, but a lot of folks say hi to me. They tell me uh, where they are and what their high temperature is today. That's how we start the conversation. And then we go right into the topic of the day. And, and you can ask me anything you want about the cruise lines, the cruise ships, uh, the story of the day, uh, something that you, know, you want to know about. Fire away. Uh, if I can answer on the spot, I will. If I can't, uh, one of my uh, viewers here, uh, who, there's a lot of folks here who love to cruise, and they've been on a bunch of cruises, more than I have. Uh, they'll help uh, with answers as well. Sometimes the answer I give just won't satisfy even my own viewers, and they'll kick in with their advice, and away we go. And that's what this channel is all about. We love talking about cruise ships. We actually love cruising. Uh, but this week, it hasn't been all peaches and cream and kittens and pussycats, has it? It's been just some nasty stuff. And uh, I got some more for you. And I got a trivia question for you guys today. I promised some trivia today. I've got a travel trivia question for you towards the end of the show. If you stick around, we'll play that one today. It's always fun doing that. And uh, we'll get around to that. Okay, so let me say hi to who's here. And uh, let's talk to everybody. And let's let's introduce everyone to everybody else. If you're new, uh, you're saying hi. Tell us you're new. The gang will immediately say hi to you. They'll, they'll just say, oh, how are you doing? Uh, especially if you're a new cruiser. If you're new to cruising, you've come to the right place, like I said. If you're new and you've never cruised before, tell us, and, and then we'll, we'll guide you. If you've booked a cruise, you know, you're a new cruiser, and you're going on your very first cruise, tell us the name of the ship you're going on. What's the, where are you headed? At Caribbean, Mediterranean? What are, the chances are someone around here has been on your ship, and they'll tell you all about it. Uh, they, we're here to help. Okay. Tommy Eaton uh, was talking here already uh, at 1.38 uh, Eastern time, 22 minutes before the show. And Tommy is saying, hi, Bruce, and all high of 85 in Jacksonville, Florida. But rain and cool front is coming in as we speak. Well, maybe it's mine because I've got snow here. Only a couple hours of rain expected, though. Well, I'll we'll take, take it. Get, get it out of there. Kick it out of there. Randy Lucas, greetings, Bruce. Uh, and all from the Mermaid's Tail Bar aboard the Regal Princess. <laughs> He's been on the cruise all week talking to us every day. This is fantastic. I love it. Uh, final sea day before our turnaround in Fort Lauderdale. It's sunny and 80 degrees today just south of the Bahamas. So he's heading to Fort Lauderdale, and he's getting on another cruise. He's on three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cruising, and this is the first of three cruises. This has just been fantastic. He's been talking to us all week from a ship. You got to love that. Randy, this is awesome. Thank you for coming by and, and sticking with us. Nancy Nolan is here. Hi, Bruce. Hello, everybody. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Uh, Seakeeper is here. Uh, hi, Bruce and everyone taking a break from my chores <laughs> to talk cruising. 86 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade here in Tequista, Florida, and very enjoyable. Uh, great to have you back. Got your email. Got it. Uh, I'll be back at you. Uh, Randy Lucas. Hi, Nancy. Uh, <laughs> Debbie Manuel. Hi, Bruce. And everyone got a bit of a break in the rain today. So I guess sun right now in 63 in Northern California. She's in Chico, California. Debbie, one of my strongest supporters. Love you, Debbie. How you doing? I uh, hope you can enjoy and enjoy the whole show without being interrupted today. Uh, Mich uh, Michelle uh, Visniski is here. Hi, Bruce. Minus three in Renfrew, Ontario. And Sunny, welcome back. Uh, I, I didn't tell you about my temperature, or did I? It was like 33, 35 today. Uh, so it's like plus one, plus two Celsius here. Uh, just yucky. Uh, Debbie, hi, Randy. Hope cruising is going fantastic. Nancy is saying, that Randy, I hope your day is going well. Randy is going, hi, Debbie. We're having a ball. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> cruise. Uh, Nancy, uh, Nancy Nolan saying, I'm sure it's going better than mine since I'm not cruising right now. I, we're, we're all in second place behind this guy. Uh, believe me, he's, he's got us beat. Um, fantastic. Uh, Stargazer 35 in Kentucky uh, with snow. Yeah, you got the weather I got. 
exactly the same kind of temperature. And uh, yeah, it's yucky. Oh, Stargazer, we need spring. Uh, Kathy Butler, hey, everybody. Hey, Kathy, how are you? One of my real loyal followers. Cam Wilson is here, too. Hey, buddy, how are you? Welcome back. Kathy, uh, Randy, are you staying on the same ship? <laughs> so it's just a, on a turnaround. I'm not sure if he is. Uh, Sealid, uh, sea Keeper, uh, snow is so depressing. I prefer palm and mango trees. <laughs> Palms to the right, mangoes to the left. No construction, toxic dust here. Thumbs up. It's... <laughs> He's got it very good. Absolutely. Uh, Stargazer, hi, Kathy. Randy, uh, hey, Cam, hey, Kay. Kathy, guess we don't disembark. Uh, we don't disembark until April 29th. So he's on a he's on the same ship. He doesn't get off. He gets into Fort Lauderdale, just stays on the ship in Fort Lauderdale. They turn around, they go back out. He just goes right back out again. How about, how about that? That's nice. Fantastic. Stargazer saying hi, Cam. Debbie Emanuel, Randy also must be nice. To be a few people not in a panic to pack all your bags on the last night of the cruise, you guys will have the entire ship to yourselves for a while. God, that's that's just awesome. Uh, Cam Wilson, hola, Randy. Hola, star. Uh, <laughs> Cam Wilson, Randy, you're so lucky to be doing uh, a back-to-back -back cruise. I get really, really sad on the last day of a cruise. It, it is something, folks. Those of you who have never cruised before, uh, I got to tell you, the last day of the cruise uh, is a downer because you know it's over. Um, it's usually a sea day where you're just kind of chugging back to the uh, to the port, especially if you're on the Mexican side, like on the California side. You're coming up from Cabo or something like that. You, you got a whole day at sea to, to make up the distance. So that whole last day, you're on the ocean. You can't even mask it or hide it by by being on shore somewhere and enjoying yourself or, you know, catching up. A, sorry, I got to do my, you know. Got to keep up appearances, you know. Uh, you, you can't mask it by going ashore and getting drunk at a, at a bar. <laughs> you have to get drunk on the ship <laughs> if you're into drinking. Uh, but you got to pack and, you know, you got to deal with your dirty laundry. And then you got to start talking about, oh, what time's our flight? And how are we getting home? And then, oh, it's depressing. And the evening, like as the day wears on, on, a, on the last day of the cruise, all the suitcases start to show up. On the outside of the uh, on the outside of the uh, room, uh, suitcases are lining the hallways on both sides, from the inside rooms and the balcony rooms, all the way down the halls. Because the deal is, you put your bag tag on there, and and the uh, the, uh, the the staff, the cruise ship workers, all over the uh, during the evening uh, while you're sleeping, they're grabbing all the bags and taking them downstairs to get them off the ship in the morning when we dock. And uh, usually the ship will hit the will hit the pier. Oh, they'll be there by about four or five in the morning very early and for hours the uh, the crew are taking the bags off the ship and they're they're getting uh, set up inside the terminal and uh getting you know waiting for you to come and get your bags and of course you're going through customs and everything else uh so in your room you just have your you know maybe one suitcase left with what you you need for the evening and for the next morning or you've got your carry-ons and uh you know you've got your clothing laid out then this is what i'm going to wear tomorrow this is what we need for, you know, going to the airport tomorrow and all that. And then, and then everything else is in the suitcases. And uh, you're walking up and down the, 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 the hallways in the evening on the last night, you know, you see the show or you stop in the casino a little bit. And then you're kind of walking down the hallways and you're heading to your room and all you see are suitcases. It's just the saddest sight because we all got to go except for Randy Lucas. On this trip right now, he doesn't have to do that. He can keep all of his stuff in his room. He could just chillax and he could just yeah, sleep in and oh, he could go and have breakfast whenever he wants. And then he can head over to the pool or to the jacuzzi or whatever and not do nada. Now, I think he has to recheck in with customs. I think he has to do that uh, at one point in the time. And I, I know the ship will handle it for him. They'll, uh, they'll have probably given him a time uh, to and where on the ship to gather up for the the back-to-backers, the, the, those who are not leaving, and uh, they'll then be escorted to customs as a group. They'll clear customs, and they'll just walk right back on the gangplank and go back to their ship and leave everything in the room. They're not taking anything off. Awesome stuff. Well, I'll tell you, just, oh, I just I wish I were on a cruise ship right now. That's fantastic. Um, Randy is saying, uh, um, I'll, Monday, I'll give you a count of in-transit passengers for the next seven-day cruise. That, I'd like to know that. That'd be great. Now, we have a Sir, Sireni uh, pa Palisi is here. Sireni Palisi, I think. Bruce, on these live feeds, could you go back afterwards and post timestamps in the description below so that folks can directly click direct to a particular part without having to go through in the entire hour? 
Sireni, uh, uh, I would love to do that, um, uh, but I don't have the time. I, I, I'm just so up to, uh, while well, I'm over here now, I'm trying to desperately keep up with what's going on. Um, and and if I'm to sit there and just you know go through every minute every second, uh, it would just it just kills me. Um, now uh, I'm more than happy to say to any of my viewers, if you're watching my show <laughs> and you got nothing better to do, you want to uh, go through my show and say uh, uh, you know Bruce talks about the the so and so at fifteen forty two, and then he talks about that at twenty one twenty. You be be my guest to be the uh, you know the onboard editor for that. Uh, but I, I just don't have the time to do that because the shows are different lengths every day and the topics come and go and I'm juggling five balls at the same time with what I want to talk about, what you guys want to talk about. And then I got to promote the video and ex ex put it up there and get ready for the next one. And uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm doing two shows each night. Uh, there's only so much I can do and I can't, I'm not in a position to hire anyone to do this for me at this point. So I, I can't help you to be that convenient. Uh, plus, I kind of want to watch the whole thing. <laughs> I'd really like to watch the whole thing. But those of you who are regulars, you know how this works. You can see on the chat, uh, on the chat bar, as you for if you forward through the show a little bit, you can see what the comments are, and you kind of know, oh yeah, he's he's still talking to his people. Or you can tell there's a comment there about the MSCC side. You might want to watch that, and you can just stop the video and watch there, and you can move the cursor back and forth all you want. Um, and uh, enjoy. So that's my long answer to a very short pr particular question. And I apologize, I can't make it any more uh, convenient for you to get you to where you want to be. Because this show, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about in 30 seconds. It's kind of like I'm watching, uh, you know, that movie with uh, Mel Brooks and uh, Spaceballs, you know, and they're in the they're in the ship, and then they go they go to the they go to the ship to watch themselves. <laughs> they, they rerun the movie. To see what they've done, and they go, well, we've already done that part. No, go fast forward, fast forward. What's going to happen now? What's happening later versus what already happened? Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen because this is I'm live. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, Kathy Butler, Randy, uh, what do you do while everyone is disembarking and the new ones embark? I will wait for his answer. Uh, Silo, morning, Bruce. Fifty-seven for the high, forty-eight for the low. Raining in Seattle. Two hundred three days to go to the bliss. Oh, fantastic, West Morrison. Hi, Bruce from Corpus Christi, where it is 50 with 30 mile an hour winds. I'm heading back to New Braunfels tomorrow for warmer weather. Yeah, I mean, Wes, you're already in paradise at West Braunfels, Texas, where, where it's just gorgeous all the time. Now you, you you go over to Corpus Christi telling us you want to hit some nice beach weather and you don't get any. There's something wrong about this. There's, you got to call the governor. What, what's going on with Texas? This is not, this isn't right. <laughs> Welcome, Wes Morrison. Uh, Randy Lucas, Kathy Butler, we enjoy hanging out in the International Cafe, or sometimes we head up to the adult pool and we just relax. Nice. Nice. Kathy Butler, are there any paperwork or hoops to jump through? Nancy Nolan, I'm in the Boston area currently under sunny skies and a balmy 45 in Boston. Spring is in the air in Boston. I know, because it's the last day of the NHL hockey season, I think today or tomorrow. And the playoffs are on. And right now, the Masters are on television. It's got to be spring. The Masters are on television. Uh, Randy Lucas, sometimes we are required to disembark and go through customs and immigration. Then right back on. The last several times, customs has come on board and we've never left. How about that? So that's kind of interesting. We'll see if interesting what happens tomorrow. Uh, Kathy's saying, that's great. Kathy, Sienna, uh, Sirianna, I hope you stay with us. We go through so many topics and questions and everyone is so great with their input and questions. There really is no... You know, with this show, to kind of go back to that question, well, can you post the times that you're covering certain things? I have no structure to this to this show. It's, television. it's not a television show. It's just a show. I'm all over the map with this show, which kind of keeps it interesting, I think. Uh, and I let you guys to sometimes take the show to another direction. I'll get a question from a viewer that's right out of the blue, out of another topic, and we'll go there for 15 minutes because it's so darn interesting, and then we'll work our way back to where we were before. And that's why I can't really tell you, oh, I... 2144, you gotta watch this. Uh, it, it doesn't really work that way. Um, Randy Lucas with Princess, they have us gather in the Princess Theater as a group around nine ish in the morning for processing. There you go. There you go. That's how they'll do it. Paul Willigus is here. Uh, Willigus, uh, hey, Bruce, and all 35 and rainy snowy here in Virginia. That's not warm enough. Uh, Tina Odell, a 55 and rain in Raleigh, North Carolina. However, it's 13 days until the Vista. <laughs> ah, yes, 13 days, and you should have a good time on that ship. Absolutely. 
Uh, Ola Paul Cam is saying, Debbie Manuel, oh, yeah, Tina, how exciting. Uh, hello, Cam, from Paul Wilgus. Uh, Sienna, uh, uh, Serenia, I have no idea what you're saying. Uh, Silo, one of the favorite things to do, going to the top deck and watching the peer runners on port days. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, yes, Tommy Eaton, 35 days and counting till the uh, carnival elation beckons my presence to cruise, my wife and I, to the Bahamas for Mother's Day. Yes, 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 that will be fantastic. Kathy, love your name, Sirena pronounced. Oh, okay, uh, Sirena, Sirena. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. I had no idea what that what you were doing. <laughs> Sirena, that's how we pronounce the name. And welcome to the channel. Welcome to uh, my uh, my show here. And I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Anna, EP, Drury, and uh, 75 in Honolulu today. Aloha. <laughs> I'll take a Drury 75 over what I got, Anna. I'll tell you that. Uh, Kathy, uh, Randy sounds like Princess does it right. Uh, Siri, Sir, 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 Sirina uh, says, thanks, Katie. <laughs> Sirina. Uh, Kathy, uh, Silo Oman, does that happen a lot? Uh, peer runners. Uh, Debbie Manuel, yay, Tommy, e, will it be your first time on the elation? Uh, Kathy Butler, Tommy, y'all must be getting excited. Randy Lucas, Tommy, e, we really enjoyed the elation years back. Uh, Jim Thomas uh, is here. Hi, all, si uh, 63, partly sunny here in Anderson, California. And Jim Thomas just threw me a couple of dollars on my super chat. There's that bar. I tell you, there he is. Jim, thank you again. This will afford my wife a hot dog at Costco. Uh, after we take off the fees for 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 uh, YouTube, <laughs> we got us a hot dog. Thank you very much, Jim. I really appreciate the super chat donation. Any and all are welcome. Those of you who don't know, if you if you donate ten dollars or more, ten U.S. dollars or more, these items behind you, you could pick any one of these you want. I've got sports medallions here from NFL teams, NHL teams, and uh, baseball teams, basketball teams. And U.S. colleges. I also have necklaces from the same leagues and U.S. colleges. There's, that's just a smattering of what I have. I have 70 or 80 different teams. Just tell me the team you want. I'll mail it to you, uh, sh shipping included. Send me $10 or more U.S. Enjoy whichever one of those you like. Uh, send me 20 U.S. Take two. Uh, I also have here U.S. teams here, including right here. I got the Star Trek medallion right there. You see that? Oh, upside down. Sorry. There it is. Uh, 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 there it is. Okay, I'll get it. There it is. Got the Star Trek medallion. Uh, do you know anyone that's in the service? Uh, you want to thank them for being in the service? Send them one of these. Uh, here's the, uh, the fire department, the army, uh, the air force, the navy. How about the Dodgers? There's one from the Dodgers, and here's one from the Beatles. Anyone, anyone a Beatles fan out there? I'll send you one of these medallions from from any of these. Um, I just don't show these every show anymore because I don't want to bore people and, and annoy anybody by constantly asking for this. But once in a while, I have to – I have to go to my pen. Every once in a while, I have to, I'll show these off. So if there's a college you're looking for, ask me. I'll let you know if I have it. Uh, I'm sure I'll have a medallion you might want or a necklace you might be interested in. If you can send me 10 or more, I would appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Um, let's continue on. Tommy Eaton, first cruise ever. This is his first cruise on the Elation. By the way, what the heck is a port runner? Uh, Tommy Eaton, we're excited. What is a port runner? Uh, one, who's telling me what the port runner? Cam Wilson, has the Carnival Elation gotten the Carnival 2.0 upgrades yet? Uh, question. Uh, Kathy, yay, Jim, with the super chat. Uh, Tammy Ray, hello today. Hi, Tammy, welcome back. Uh, Debbie Manuel, Tom, Tommy, you will have a great time on the Elation. Uh, the runners are the people that are late getting back onto the ship on four days. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's what they are. <laughs> You're not there in time. The ship will leave you behind. That's right. Folks, if the ship is leaving at four in the afternoon, they mean it. They're leaving at four in the afternoon. Don't be late. Uh, uh, get back. Yeah, so you're on your deck. You're on the deck, and you're looking down at the pier, and you're looking at your watch going, oh, it's uh, it's quarter to four. <laughs> it's 10 to four. It's five to four. And the gangplank is still, up, is still down. And they're letting the last minuters get on if they can get there in time. And sure enough, every darn time, if you're on a port where there's a long pier, you'll see people running down the pier like crazy, like three or four of them. They're, and you know they're in their 40s or 50s or their 60s. These, these aren't 20-year-old these aren't kids, okay? They're not like marathoners on the side. These are like you and me. We like pie, cake, and ice cream, <laughs> the odd libation. And we kind of let ourselves go into middle age. <laughs> 
advanced middle age. You'll see these folks coming down the fair, bags of stuff that they bought at some t-shirt shop or who knows what they were doing. And they're running to catch the ship. They don't want the ship to leave without them. And, of course, the folks in the gangplank, they're snickering like crazy because they know how many there are. There's seven missing. There's five still to come, whatever the numbers. And they're doing the count with the binoculars. Oh, there's five of them. How many are we waiting for? Five. All right. Well, let's watch them come in. <laughs> they come running in. And, of course, on a, on a 900-foot-long, 1,000-foot-long cruise ship, there's got to be 1,000 to 1,500, maybe 2,000 people hanging off their balconies, yipping it up at them. And yelling at him, keep it going, run, don't stop. <laughs> and these folks are running for their lives because they don't want to be left behind. But sometimes they don't make it. Sometimes they're 10 minutes late and the ship is five feet off the pier. And here they come. And they're not getting on that ship. They missed it. And now you got to figure out how to get from there, the pier, to us at the next stop. And the next stop might be Miami. It's all over. Or it's in St. Thomas or St. Martin, wherever it is. And now they're scrambling. And if you haven't got your passport on you, oh. And if you haven't got a credit card on you, oh, you got problems. Because the first violation you've made already is you're illegally on that piece of land. You're not supposed to be there. You're supposed to be on that ship. Your passport only cleared you for the cruise. Now you got to report to the authorities. I'm illegally in your country. I'm sorry. I missed my boat. And now you got to figure out how to get to the ship on the next stop. And if you're taking a flight, oh, are you going to pay? Because you're talking a last-minute booking at the airport. Good luck. Yeah, don't miss the boat. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie, for mentioning that. Kathy, we, we take Bruce down so many rabbit trails laughing out loud. Debbie, Emmanuel, yay, Jim, Michelle, hello, friends. Dammy Ray, 16 below Celsius wind chill today in Calgary. What is going on in Calgary? I used to live there. Since I left, that town's turned cold. That used to be a nice, warmer place when I was there. 16 below Celsius, that's like, uh, oh my gosh, that's uh, that's zero. That's like zero Fahrenheit. And cold and windy. Oh, that's not fun. No, oh, no, no. I mean, I'm complaining right now because there's snow falling, but at least it's like 32, 34 degrees. It, it's just melting on contact, but it's not melting in Calgary. Oh my gosh. A silo, a uh, Cabo question. How far is Cabo Wabo from where the tenders drop you off at? It doesn't seem far on the map. Is it a safe walk? Good question. Does anybody know? I don't get off the boat in Cabo. I stay on the ship because I hate the tenders. Uh, anybody got a, an answer to that? Uh, checking from, um, sorry, Peter Heckema, checking in from Tarpon Springs, Florida. 85 degrees here. You're killing me. You're killing me, uh, you're, you're killing me softly, though. <laughs> Charlie Bob, hi, Bruce. Six days to my Caribbean cruise next Saturday. Yes. It's going to be great. Charlie, I can't wait to hear from you. If you can reach us on the ship, that's fine. But otherwise, I'll hear from you when you're back. This is going to be great. Uh, Debbie Manuel, O Silo is just a few blocks. It's on the main street, so not going through alleyways to get there. You can walk it. Yeah, you'll be fine. Peter Heckema. Oh, man, Peter, another hot dog for Jennifer. $1.99 for that hot dog. Send me any amount you want. Uh, fantastic, Peter. Uh, that's two I got today. Fantastic. Boy, if I get another dollar in here, then I'll I'll – get her a hot dog and I can get myself a chicken bake because I love those Costco chicken bakes. I just love them. And if I can get a couple of dollars after that, then I can go for the, uh, I can go for the Sunday for dessert because they got those big ass Sundays, you know, because, uh, you know, when you got a big ass RV like me, and that's an inside joke for those of you who saw my April Fool's video, you got a big ass RV like I need a big ass Sunday to enjoy it. <laughs> and I can buy some of that Costco gas. For that big ass RV I'm driving out there. Oh man, did I have fun last Sunday? For you newbies who were not here, go back to April 1st and watch my video that I did on April the 1st. Big news about my channel. You got to watch that video. That was so much fun. Oh, Kathy Butler. Yay, Peter, Kathy, Charlie, only six days. Woohoo! Who are you sailing with? Uh, Debbie Emmanuel Silo have been there a few times and they have military or police standing around weapons in Cabo. You'll feel very safe. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh, BH, go Red Sox. Hey, Debbie Emanuel, uh, yay, super chats. Uh, Randy Lucas, Silo, e easy, just exit the tender, turn right and stay on the main street. Can't miss it. There you go. Everyone's helping you out right now. You got you got it made in Cabo. Uh, Tommy, uh, my wife said it got upgraded last year. Fantastic. Nancy Nolan, plenty of peer runner videos on YouTube. Laugh out loud. Love watching those. <laughs> 
<laughs> Randy Lucas, ditto what Debbie E states. Very safe downtown. You'll have a ton of folks wanting to sell your wanting to sell you stuff. So you know you can pick up all kinds of good stuff. Oh man, unbelievable. Just keep walking. Just go. Just go. Sea keeper with fear runners. I love to tell. To tell. Take your time. No rush. It gets giggles every time. And some fellow passengers actually join me. <laughs> oh, people are. There's the cat calls. People are sending cat calls. Like you better run. You're gonna miss it. We're getting ready to go. <laughs> Get your camera out and film it for yourself. Uh, so much fun. Anybody got video like that? You want to send it to me? I'd love to post a video like that. I would post a video of, of, of beer runners. That would be hilarious. Uh, you can always send me uh, send me videos uh, through my email or whatever, and and uh, just contact me through the channel, and I'll send you. That would be fun. Uh, <laughs> the steaming bean. I'm often on the ship two hours before it leaves. He's not taking any chances. <laughs> uh, I agree with you there. Uh, you don't want to be the last guy on. Uh, Tommy Eaton, uh, thanks, Nancy. Have to check our runners on YouTube after the show. Deb Boy, Debbie, don't forget to click thumbs ups, you guys. Uh, thank you for all the thumbs up. Silo, Steve, we'll be in Mazatlan on Halloween. Should be fun on the Bliss. Oh, yeah. Um, Michael B, hello. Uh, we will be on NCL Bliss in August for the Ala for Alaska. Last day, uh, we were in Victoria. Uh, last day, we were in Victoria from 10, 4 to 10 p.m. What should I see in Victoria from 4 till 10 Oh, the gardens uh, near the the hotel, the beautiful hotel there, the gardens. Uh, you're, it's just a pretty place. Uh, you'll also be given one of those flyers from the cruise line, and they'll have a map there of all the sites you can see, walking distance. You're going to love it. Steaming Bean, 99 days till my escape cruise to Bermuda. Right on, buddy. Uh, less than 100. Now you're into double digits. This is great. By the way, Victoria, go on YouTube. Enter Victoria, like cruise ship, visit Victoria. You'll see what other folks have done. That's how you gather intelligence on this stuff. Cam Wilson, laugh out loud. I watched the R the RV video. I was dying. I was dying when I watched the RV video. You got to watch it. It's just, it's just one of my classics. It's becoming a classic. Oh, I love doing that. Uh, Silo in Victoria, check out the Empress Hotel. Yeah, that's the hotel I was thinking about. Charlie Bob, I go by myself. Right on, Charlie. Michelle Dory, I'm on the Escape 2 in October uh, 21st. Bahamas, can't wait. Have an awesome trip. Fantastic. Kathy, what ship, Charlie? What ship? Steve Bartley, uh, Michael B. Uh, Buchart Gardens. The owners used to be Snowbird Neighbors in Arizona. The Buchart Gardens, yeah. Um, there's a there's a channel out there I love watching. Uh, what are they called? Oh, Bruce, think, think, Bruce. There's a husband and wife with four kids, three kids. Husband, wife, three kids in a travel in an in a in a trailer. They're in a pickup truck. Oh, dang, I can't remember their name right now. They did a beautiful video of the Buchart Gardens last summer. Just beautiful. Uh, it'll come to me. Uh, keep, uh, keep the, uh, keep your daydream. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Keep your daydream. Check them out. They did a beautiful video of the Bucard Gardens last year. I uh, love watching those guys. They high quality stuff too. Really high quality. The kind of videos I'd make if I were in my big SRV, because if I were in my big SRV, I could drive to all these places, take cruises in between, you know, uh, stop at Costco's and get gas from my big ass RV because my that's what my viewers tell me I should be doing. Uh, and I would take videos of places like this. <laughs> um, Michelle Viznitsky, uh has sent me a super chat for $5 Canadian dollars right there. How about that? Thank you so much. I love it. Uh, that's that's definitely the, the Sunday. That's enough to get me to Sunday at Costco. Yeah. So the next time I'm down there, Jennifer gets the hot dog. I get the chicken bake, and now I got me a Sunday. This is awesome. Thanks, you guys. Love it. Uh, yay, Michelle from Kathy Butler. Randy Lucas Silo. Key phrase in Mexico is no gracias. No gracias. <laughs> no, thank you. No gracias. The steaming bean. I'm a biscuit. I'm a, I'm a biscuit away from 400, so no peer run for me. Oh, I'm a... <laughs> You're never going to catch a steaming bean running down the pier. Okay, he, he's uh, just a little on the larger side. Uh, but the once the mow gets going, get out of the way. I mean, you know, don't get in the way of the mow. But steaming bean, uh, he's not going to be running down that pier. No way. Uh, you're the kind of guy, steaming bean, that'll hire one of those guys with the bicycle uh, carts, you know. And you'll just take that for yourself. And it'll just take a little whip and just whip that guy. Come on, let's go. i got to make the chef on time. Don't let make me be late. That's where you're at. I know, I know the kind. It's awesome. <laughs> That's Abby Ray. Buchart Gardens. Uh, Kathy Butler, loving it. Charlie Baum, Royal 
grandeur of the seas. The grandeur of the seas. Oh man, this grand, no royal grandeur. Twelve days. Awesome. Awesome. This is gonna be great. Debbie Manuel escape was wonderful. So much to do. Have to work very hard to be born on that ship. Yes. Steaming Bean, great RV. YouTube critics are Camo Dave and Blind Views. There's a bunch of them out there. That just there's so, so many great RVers out there doing some some fantastic work. I love it. All right, I've caught up with my messages here. I just woke up from a nap. Hi, all, Wendy Thompson. Hi, Wendy. <laughs> you well, you made it. Uh, a couple of things I was going to mention today. <clears throat> I actually have notes. <clears throat> uh, unbelievable. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I was going to talk about. Uh, I'm getting. I'm getting ready to make some more videos, just regular videos, about the uh, Norwegian Sun because uh, the the that the info just keeps coming out. It's unbelievable. Uh, the captain thing. Uh, now I, I'm kind of I'm going to put this out to you guys because um, it might have been one of you folks who are watching right now who was talk, talking about this the other day. Um, <clears throat> but I got to dig up this information and try to verify it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, a few days ago, I was talking about the Norwegian Sun uh, as it was breaking. The story was evolving, and uh, somebody mentioned to me that the captain was new. Uh, the captain on board the Sun was a new captain. And this is on that Panama Canal cruise, that the last cruise before the ship went into dry dock. Now, I've confirmed that. I know that's to be the case, that the captain was a new captain for that ship. And I've also found out that the previous captain, who I guess has been around for a long time, he uh, ended his tour on the ship on the 16th of March, which was the, the day that the ship came back from a Western Caribbean one-week cruise. And the same day that new captain took over and did the Panama cruise. And he's the one that we're seeing on the uh, on the videos uh, all over the place where they were booing him. The passengers were booing this guy. He lasted like three minutes because he could barely speak comprehensible, comprehensive English. Uh, and his answers were so lame for these irate passengers uh, that he just, he just got the hell out of there. I think he was about to get beat up. Uh, he did nothing. He did nothing. The captain before, though, I've been trying to figure out this one. Why would a captain leave a cruise ship, the cruise before a repositioning cruise? Uh, before, I'm sorry, the cruise before dry dock. Let me let me just take a zip here. By the way, this is a USA caffeine-free Diet Coke here. This is USA. There's no there's no French on it. It's all English. From Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Safeway. Thank you very much. It was on sale. Anyway, why would a captain who's been on a cruise ship for years and years and years, who knows every little thing about that ship. He's the captain of the ship. He knows all the crew members. He knows all the managers. He has daily manager meetings, the hotel manager, the resort manager, the director, the you know, cruise director, the entertainment director. He's in charge of everything. He does all the paperwork. He reports back to Norwegian. He's been on that cruise for years and years and years. And this ship is about to go into dry dock for what are they talking about? Two and a half weeks? I think it was like 15, 18 days, 19 days. Um, we're talking about 50 to $60 million to be spent on this cruise ship by Norwegian in dry dock. And who would know better than anyone else the condition of the ship and what uh, parts of the ship should be paid particular attention to by the folks in dry dock. Uh, there are contractors waiting in Victoria, British Columbia, or were waiting. I mean, the ship's there now, of course. They were waiting for the ship to arrive. And the captain of the ship for, I don't know, five years, 10 years? How long was he the captain? This one also what I'm trying to figure out. How long was he the captain on this ship before he left the ship? Uh, and then they brought in this new guy who can barely speak English of any kind to run the ship and now take it to dry dock. What's that all about? Uh, it makes no sense. Um, the, the, the official story was well, the captain was going on a vacation. It was time for his holiday. Captains don't go on holiday when you're going into dry dock. <laughs> I don't think so. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, folks. I'm not an expert mariner. Uh, running cruise ships, but I'm thinking, hey, <laughs> if it's my ship, I'm the captain of the ship, and it's going into dry dock, is this when I take a holiday? I, I wouldn't be taking a holiday. I'd be supervising all the work being done on the ship. 
I'd be talking to contractors. I'd be talking to the representatives from Norwegian because a bunch of the head office boys, the, the, the boys in charge of retrofitting, they're flying up there. They're coming up to Victoria. They're meeting me. They're seeing me in person to talk about how's the ship doing? Are we, is there anything we're missing? Uh, what do you think of this repair job? Are you happy with this? Is there anything else we should know? Uh, that's how I'd run a cruise line. I mean, I'd have my staff talking to my captain and all the managers in a person-to-person -person way for two and a half weeks. I've got these people in the palm of my hand for two and a half weeks so I can go over everything. The hotel manager can grab the, the head guy, the head hotel guy and his cronies and walk the ship. Let's. I got to show you room number 1444. I got to show you this uh, kitchen area over here. I got to show you the problem we had in the dining room. I got to show you this. I got the entertainment director is going to want to know about the sound system, the lighting, the stage. The 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 entertainment directors are are, are off the ship and they're back to uh, the rehearsal centers getting ready for their next shows. But there are people down below where the crew is looking after crew concerns like the housing for the crews, plumbing issues, uh, you know whatever. This is where the captain is involved making sure that every person's needs and concerns are addressed at dry dock with the dry dock people. And that includes Norwegian management. What is this captain doing leaving the ship on the 16th of March, the third week into construction cruising? By the way, this is a third. They've, he's been involved in three consecutive cruises where these chemicals and this dust and this garbage has been going on. And people have been just complaining left, right, and center for three consecutive cruises, getting ready for the fourth one through the Panama Canal, uh, heading up the dry dock. I, I think I have another reason why the captain isn't there. <laughs> I, I think I know. I, I'm guessing. I don't think he's on a holiday. I, I don't think so. No. He might have wanted off that ship. Maybe he didn't want to have anything to do with that ship anymore maybe he made a few complaints and nobody backed him up at head office maybe he was put in his place and told take it shut up and take it and he'd had enough and he walked maybe he walked has anyone thought of that uh, or he put in for a transfer hey I, I can't be here anymore with this ship sorry i i love you guys but you know i just can't be and maybe they talked to him and said well tell you what uh, instead of quitting why don't we transfer you to another ship? Why don't we give you a little holiday right now? And then we'll put you on another ship instead. And you won't have to be, you know, associated with this. I'm thinking to myself, really? This guy was willing to do that? Is that, is that his um, is that his morals? His morals are here, but not here. He's willing to be involved with this nonsense up to a point, And then he'll walk away and he'll be on another ship instead to keep his job, I guess. Uh, I understand it. Hey, if it's a hundred thousand dollar a year job or two hundred thousand dollar a year job, you know, do you want to lose it? Uh, I, maybe that's a solution. But boy, uh, talk about leaving nine thousand people hanging to dry, hanging out to dry with this nonsense going on. And now they put this. I don't know this captain, this new guy. Is he a bona fide captain from another division? Did they fly him in from Europe? Did they fly him in from a, you know another? I don't know where did where did where did Norwegian get this guy from? Is he a was he like a second in command guy who's now been bumped up to be in command of this ship? Was he involved with this ship a week before, or was he on another ship and he was flown into Miami, put on board this ship, made captain for one cruise? Just take it up, just take it up to Victoria. Just get us to L.A., dump these passengers off. Let's get rid of them. We'll stop in Ensenada on the way to L.A. We'll dump all this chemical crap off, drop off all these toxic chemicals and all this construction waste. We'll uh, dispose of it in Ensenada, Mexico. For God's sake, don't bring it to the United States. Then get it to L.A., then get the ship to Victoria, and then we'll deal with it from there. I, I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out, and I've got some of the folks on the uh, Facebook site helping me. Unbelievable. So that's one of the things I want to mention to you, I'm working on that. Unbelievable. Uh, let me just see if uh, there's anything else going on here that I've missed. Uh, just checking up, checking up, because I've had messages coming in. I don't want to miss any of these messages from you guys. Um, 
Uh, let's go through here. Uh, Kathy Butler was saying, watch the tour of the new Symphony of the Seas today. Huge three-story main dining room room. So beautiful, but so loud. Too many people for me, I think. Lots to do, though. Randy Lucas, Debbie, uh, we received a note from our cabin door from Dawn from Paradise. Uh, uh, Dawn from Paradise. Michelle decorates our door, so he, he knew. We were hometown folks, still haven't found the guy. <laughs> uh, Wendy Thompson, I saw Inside Edition uh, run uh, last night. Run, Captain, run. Yeah, she saw the she saw how the captain got run out of that room. Uh, Debbie Manuel, Randy, how striking cool is that? Uh, how stinking cool is that? Hope you get a chance to find him such a small world. Silo, the sun had a total refurbishment in 2016 also. Uh, Wendy Thompson, Bruce, uh, go to Victoria, get the info. <laughs> uh, Michelle Lucas, uh, Silo, amigo, uh, we've been going to, uh, be going to Cabo 22 years. Uh, we fly, cruise, and drive the Baja. There you go. They love it. Kathy, my condolences to Canada for the tragic bus accident and deaths of the youth hockey team. So heartbreaking. 828 people on the bus, 14 dead, 14 injured. What a mess. Semi T-boned a bus. The bus was headed to the playoff game, number six, the sixth playoff game in the series. Wiped out. Unbelievable. Uh, just kids, eight, 16-year-old, 17-year-old kids. Terrible. Uh, let's see here. Tommy Eaton, that captain was covering his ass. Yeah, the steaming bean. Bruce, you need to get your subs to 2,000 by Victoria Day, long weekend, the end of May. Well, wouldn't that be great? Uh, the steaming bean, uh, Kathy Butler, my colleague, uh, new kids on that bus. I live in Saskatchewan. It's the, it's the national news in Canada. It's terrible. Um, let's see here. Silo, on loan from Costa, uh, Silo's thinking. Uh, Gaylene Davidson's here. Hi, Bruce. No snow here. Six degrees Celsius. Uh, okay, uh, that's okay, Gaylene, for you. Uh, hang on to it. Hang on to that weather. Steamy Bean, Humboldt, Saskatchewan is only 6,000, the, the population, 6,000 for the whole town. 28 people, uh, 14 dead, 14 hurt out of 6,000. Unbelievable. Everyone's crushed. Gaylene Davidson, 21 days until I'm in Bali for 30 days. Yes, fantastic. Kathy Butler, unimaginable tragedy there. Uh, yeah, this captain thing, we'll see what happens. Um, now, next story. Uh, I'm gonna, this is why I can't put times on these videos. Uh, let's talk about Humboldt, Saskatchewan at the, uh, uh, what is it, the 55-minute mark. You know, I can't do that. Okay, other information about the Norwegian cruise line uh, that I came up with. And, and this is just, why would they do this? Why would they have four cruises back to back to back to back as construction cruises put thousands of, peoples, of people at risk from dangerous chemicals, the crew of a 1,000, the whole 60 days they were exposed to this poison. Why would they do that? Well, maybe it's money. People suggested maybe it's money. Well, I looked at the money. And I thought I'd throw, I'd throw it, share the money with you guys. Let me share the money story for you folks. Um, on average, Norwegian Cruise Lines, according to their fine, latest quarterly report, they make a profit per passenger per day of $21. Average net net clear money twenty one dollars a day per passenger every day. Uh, two thousand passengers on the sun, that's forty two thousand dollars a day in profit. Uh, dry dock costs three million dollars a day on average, industry average, three million a day because you've got you could have five hundred construction workers on there. You could have eight hundred at a time. All over that ship, above, below, inside, all over the place, three million a day. The wages and uh, materials, equipment, new refrigeration systems. You know, you, it's nothing to replace twenty thousand dollar piece of equipment, a hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment. Millions, three million a day average. Um, it takes seventy two days at sea to get enough money to pay for one dry dock day. Seventy two days on the ocean. On that ship will pay for one dry dock day. So now you get the you get the handle here on the money. Uh, Eighteen dry dock days takes um, uh, at, at at three million dollars a day is fifty four million dollars. Uh, Eighteen days uh, times uh, seventy two days for each dry dock day. You need twelve hundred and ninety six days at sea to pay for the dry dock on this one on this dry dock. So they need almost three and a half years of sailing time. To pay for the dry dock. Now, <clears throat> if they uh, 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 this, they've been working on that ship for sixty days now, uh, since uh, Buenos Aires on February the second until they stopped in Los Angeles on March thirty first. Virtually sixty days of time 
uh, they were uh, trying to save, I think, between four and 10 days of dry dock time. That's what they were up to. Uh, they were trying to avoid 12 to $30 million in dry dock fees. Uh, 60 days at sea brought them in, uh, brought them 2.5 million in profits. It didn't even pay for a day of dry dock day. It didn't even pay for a dry dock day. Uh, but they were trying to pull off work on the decks of that ship for 60 days to not only inconvenience passengers, that's the least of it, inconvenience. They were poisoning people for 60 days at sea. International waters, no reporting, don't have to say anything to anybody about it. And then they dumped off a bunch of, uh, of this garbage in various locations. I can't believe that Ensenada was the only place they stopped and dumped off the used chemicals, the, the construction materials. They had to have done it on every cruise that they were on. There were four of them. The last one was going to LA. Ensenada was that one. The one before that, where did they dump it off? And the one before that and the one before that, where did they dump this garbage off to avoid detection, I think, from U.S. authorities? I, I can't imagine them coming into Miami and being able to drop this stuff off. How can you drop off this toxic material at the port of Miami? I, I don't know how you can do it. The CDC would be all over them. Homeland Security would be all over them. Customs. Uh, the, the state of Florida would be all over them. The state of Florida would be all over these guys dropping off toxic materials off a cruise ship. Where did it go? Don't know. Just thoughts from a YouTuber here in Creston, BC, trying to be straight with you guys to tell you what the heck is going on with these people. Uh, it's just so deep. Like I said, like an onion, layers and layers and layers, and it's bad, bad, bad. Anyway, there you, there you are. There's, there's, there's that. One more piece of news, and then we're going to play trivia. Um, Royal Caribbean has now announced they have a full-time Instagrammer in chief on board the Symphony of the Seas. You guys are talking about the Symphony of the Seas. Beautiful looking ship, lots of events, lots of things to do. They got a full time Instagrammer on board, 38 year old guy, and he is their social media rep full time on that ship. Now, why would they do that? <laughs> well, <clears throat> good for promotion. Great way to protect the reputation of the cruise line and the ship itself. You got to understand, folks, there are 6,800 people every week getting on that ship. If they sell out, if they sell out, it'll be over 6,000 every week getting on, getting off, or getting off and getting on and rotating. And everybody has one of these. We have one of those. And these work real good. <laughs> it's spreading the word. Good word bad word and you need on board that ship a pro to handle the flow of information that is being said about that ship so you can imagine that when he's back in his cabin or in his workstation he is scouring facebook instagram youtube uh scouring pinterest he's scouring uh, twitch every social platform there is is being monitored by the Instagrammer in chief on board that ship for anything to do with that ship, good or bad. And uh, that's what Royal Caribbean has now started to do. Wouldn't surprise me that virtually every ship of a certain size will have one. They'll be on top of this like you won't believe because right now it's all positive. It's all happy times. It's all great. Symphony of the Seas, it's all good times. We're starting the first cruise now with paying passengers. Over the next two months, we're going to find out, are there any problems on board this ship? This ship's never had 8,800 people on board before at the same time. It's about to have it now. Like the MSC Seaside, they went through their sea trials. They did their media tours. Everything was kittens and ice cream. Beautiful news from the Seaside. Had the beautiful naming ceremony in Miami, the grand celebration, and then they put it out to sea. <clears throat> And now, in two and three months, MSC Seaside has had positive reviews and not positive reviews. And the MSC Seaside doesn't have an onboard Instagrammer in chief. They're letting head office handle it. And what's been going on? We've talked about the MSC Seaside endlessly. 
And there's so much negative news coming off that ship. And look at the fares. The fares are down here. I bet you the MSCC side people in head office in the accounting department were sitting there going, you know, we figured that uh, for those 20 cruises, the first 20 cruises that they were doing out there in Miami, in the Caribbean, that we'd be getting 900 bucks every week from our balcony rooms. But you know what? We're only getting $650, $550, $449 for these cruises because we can't get $950 for the cabins. We can't get it. They're not buying it. People are canceling out. Uh, Three months out, they're canceling. And if they're coming, they're coming back on the cheap price, if 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 at all, because of these problems. And they are adding it up going, oh, my goodness. Do you know how many? We we got we got four or five thousand people a week we were expecting on this ship paying this top dollar and now we're only getting this amount of money we're getting 30 percent less than we thought we're getting and you multiply it it's millions it's tens of millions of dollars and that's why the symphony of the seas has a instagrammer in chief on board that ship keep the good news coming keep the good times coming and spread happy stories it's the job. It's the PR department. It's a an onboard PR person on the ship, uh, and they're bragging about it. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's. I don't know. Would, would I be doing that? I don't know if I'd be actually promoting that. I. I, I don't know. I just it's interesting. So anything wrong happens, we got someone on board to you know talk about how great everything's being taken care of, everything's fixed, all will be well. We'll have to see if there's some, you know, is there going to be a disaster cruise? I hope not. I, I, there haven't been any that I know of on any of the other big ships. They've been okay. The Allure of the Seas, Harmony of the Seas, Oasis of the Seas, Harmony of the Seas. Everything's okay. Uh, I hope this one is good too. I want nothing but good times, please. But uh, boy, could Norwegian have used some help because, uh, boy, they got caught off guard, didn't they? They weren't. They dropped the ball uh, in every department, PR. The captain, the uh, the uh, construction department, the uh, the rebuild department, I mean, dropped the ball and exposed 9,000 people to hot, toxic chemicals that are causing health problems because people are seeing their doctors right now. Terrible, terrible. Okay, enough of that. I want to go to, uh, I want to go to trivia. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, Steaming Bean is talking about that. Uh, let's go through here. <laughs> Just make sure I haven't missed anybody here. Canada on loan Costa. <laughs> uh, make sure I haven't missed anything here. That's a lot of money for dry dock. Um, Michelle Lucas, Sagalene cruising to Bali. Wow. Kathy Butler, what a job. Full time cruising full time to Instagram. Paul Wilgus. I want that job. I don't know. I don't know if you'd want that job after a few months. It might get kind of monotonous. But then again, if this person is involved in the um, you know, the promotion of the um, activities, you know, the, uh, the onboard activities, you know, because they, they ha- they'll have their own TV studio on board and they'll be doing a show every morning, you know, broadcasting to everybody. They did that on the princess and on, I believe on the, on the Epic, if I recall, where, you know, they're watching, you're watching the show and it reruns all day long. What to do today? What to do today? There's usually two of them talking. Uh, it's a cruise director and somebody else it might be this guy's job might be part of that. You know, excuse me. Folks. Um, Anyway, very interesting. Kathy Butler, what uh, they are going to be attracting younger crowds with Instagram posts. Oh, they know. They know their market. Absolutely. Jim Thomas, I uh, love you. A uh, $6 contribution uh, from Super Chat. Jim, thank you again. I really appreciate it. Um, it's my only form of income, and I love it. Thank you, you guys. Let's play trivia. I got one for you today. There are 20 possible answers. No cheating. Don't go to Googling now. Don't be Googling on me. Uh, we've got a, 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 a cruise ship. Uh, we've got a, a, sorry, a travel trivia question for you today. And this should be right up your alley. You guys should have a field day with this. Uh, get ready now. Uh, uh, here we go. Here comes your question. One answer per text. Don't give me 15 in a row. Just one at a time. Give everybody a shot to answer this. There are 20 correct answers. <laughs> Uh, and I'll read them off as we go. I'll keep you updated on how you're doing. Uh, but here's the question for trivia. Get ready. Uh, Wendy Thompson uh, saying soda money, Jim. Yeah, more Diet Coke. Thank you. Here we go. The most visited cities in the world. What cities are visited the most 
in the planet? There are 20 correct answers, and we're covering the globe here. Uh, let me know your thoughts. What cities do you believe are the most visited cities in the world? Uh, we have 20 uh, uh, here. Uh, there are, um, of course, probably top 100, I'm sure. Top 1,000, obviously. Let's see. Kathy Butler, Orlando. She's going right for Orlando. And Orlando doesn't make the cut. And that's telling me something, and it should tell you folks something. If Disney World isn't in the top 20 on the planet, hmm, that makes you wonder. Uh, Nancy Nolan, New York. She's going for New York. Uh, New York is number five. It's not number one. It's the Big Apple, but it's only number five in the world. Uh, Randy Lucas, London. Yes, number two. London is second. London is second. Las Vegas from uh, P. Massey. Uh, no, doesn't make the cut. Uh, and there's a lot of folks that go to Vegas. I think 32 million a year, 33 million. Not on the cut, not on the line. Uh, let's see. Uh, Paul Wilgus is going with Paris. Number three. Paris is number three on the list. Very good. Los Angeles. Debbie Manuel. Los Angeles. I. That was my guess. No. Los Angeles does not make the cut of the top 20. It's got to be 21 or 22 or something like that. But it's not in the top 20. Debbie Manuel, New York City. No. Sydney, Australia from Jamie Nelson. Sydney. No. Sydney is not on the list. I couldn't believe it myself. When I was doing this, steaming bin, steaming bin, ion, ion, ion oxen. <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, Cal Wilson, Los Angeles. No, Miami. Debbie Manuel thinking, what about Miami? I mean, come on, everybody goes to Miami. Everybody goes to Miami. And the answer is no. It doesn't cut the top 20 at all. Uh, Madrid, steaming bean. Uh, is that steaming bean? Yeah, he's going with Madrid. And I'm looking, I'm looking for you. No, Madrid not on the list. Washington, D.C. from P. Massey. Got to be. It's the capital of the United States. All those tourists. No, no, not Washington either. Uh, Steaming Bean, L.A. No, Sea Keeper, London. Number two on the list was London. Steaming Bean, Barcelona. How about Barcelona? People go to Barcelona all the time. Number 12 is Barcelona. More people go to Barcelona than L.A., than Vegas. Wow. Uh, Tokyo, steaming bean. Tokyo, number nine. Tokyo, yep, they're in the top ten. San Francisco. I left my heart in San Francisco, but it didn't make the top 20. Uh, no, it didn't make the top 20. If LA can't make it, Frisco can't make it either. How about that? Chicago from the steaming bean. Chicago, no. Chicago is not on the list. No, no, no. Uh, let's see. Rome, 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 number 16. Rome is number 16. Uh, Bo Stark is thinking London. We've got London. The Vatican City, well, that's a country. I'll give you that. But on its own, it's not in the top 20. But, you know, a lot of folks who visit Rome do visit, but not everybody. So didn't make the top 20. London from Wendy, we got it. Singapore from Seakeeper. Singapore, number six. Singapore, yeah, big one. Budapest, Randy Lucas. Wondering about Budapest? No. Budapest, Hungary did not make the list. Uh, Mexico City from the Steaming Bean as well. Mexico City, uh, no, doesn't make the list. Uh, London from Deb Boy Debbie. Toronto from the Steaming Bean, no. New York, we got it. Paris, we've got it. Deb Boy Debbie. Amsterdam. Amsterdam, another new get. Yes, 13 on the list is Amsterdam for the most visited city in the world. Roma from Wendy Thompson, we've already got it. Moscow from the Steaming Bean, no. Moscow doesn't make the list. Uh, Beijing from Jamie Nelson. Does Beijing cut it is the question. Beijing, Beijing, no. Doesn't make it. Not yet. I'm sure it's growing, though. Barcelona. Uh, we did Barcelona. We got it. It was number 12. Uh, Cam Wilson, Haddonfield, Illinois. Uh, uh, you know, talk about a hot spot. Haddonfield in Illinois. <laughs> We must know a coffee shop in Haddonfield. Uh, no good. Kathy Butler, how did they come up with this list? It's How did they do that? Uh, the Steaming Bean, Manila. No. Uh, sea Killed Keeper, Mecca. Oh, no. But that's a good one. That You know, no. Because it's not every year, I don't think. Anyway, it's not Mecca. I'm just sorry. It's just not Mecca. That's a good one. Singapore, we got it. Uh, it was number six. Hong Kong. Charlie Baum is throwing me Hong Kong. 
Number 11. Yeah, you're on the list with Hong Kong. Bakersfield, California. Randy Lucas, uh, he's getting too much sun down on that cruise ship down there. Or he's been in that bar a little too long. Uh, <laughs> Jerusalem? No, no, Jerusalem, no. But that's a good guess. Uh, Kuala Lumpur from the Steaming Bean. Kuala Lumpur. Yes, number seven. Kuala Lumpur is on the list. Let me tell you the, the cities he got right, okay? No one's guessed number one. No one. Number two is London. Got it. Three is Paris. Got it. There's a number four. Number five is New York. Six is Singapore. Seven is Kuala Lumpur. You got those. Uh, eight you're missing. Number nine is Tokyo. You got number 11, Hong Kong. 12, Barcelona. 13, Amsterdam. You're missing number 14. Missing 15. 16 is Rome. Then we're looking for 17, 18, 19, and 20. We got a bunch to go yet. Uh, let's see. Silo is saying nothing there. Ter uh, ter Terrence is going to Venice. Ben I, too, thought Venice would be on the list. It's not. Venice is not on the list. Steaming Bean, Tel Aviv. No. Tel Aviv is not on the list. Uh, Manila. No. Berlin. I thought Berlin for sure. Germany. Capital. Berlin. No. Not on the list. Not on the I'm even. I'm even triple checking. <laughs> I wrote this down. No, it's not on the list. Uh, Cairo. No, Cairo's not on the list either. Miami. No. Honolulu. No. Bangkok. Uh oh, number one. Bangkok. Bangkok, Thailand is the number one visited city in the world. Yeah. Think about that. That's. That's a mind blower to me. Bangkok. I know a lot of people go to Bangkok. I didn't know it would be number one, but it is. According to this report right here, number one. Uh, Honolulu, no. Uh, Paula Kay also guessed Thai, uh, Bangkok, too. You got it. Steaming bean. Taipei. Yeah. 15. Taipei is number 15. Boston from Nancy Nolan. No, 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 no. no Boston, not even close. Let me tell you something, folks. Um, looking at this list, um, don't even bother guessing American cities. Don't bother guessing Canadian cities. Don't bother guessing Mexican cities. They're not on the list anymore. They're off, okay? The, uh, the only cities to make the top 20 from North America was New York. Uh, and that was it. <laughs> New York. <laughs> so we got to think outside the Amer North American box. We're talking about countries with population and neighbors with heavy population where visitors are coming over because the rest of the world travels in numbers we can't fathom. We love to talk about cruise ships with 27 million passengers. That wouldn't make the top 20. That wouldn't make the top 20. Unbelievable how many people travel in other ways out there. Uh, let's take a look at these end results. Uh, Honolulu, no. Taipei, got it. Boston, no. Vancouver, no. Montreal, no. Istanbul, yes. Istanbul is number eight. Uh, Rome, we've got, uh, I believe, Rome, yeah, was 16. We already got Rome. Nassau, no. Atlanta, forget North America, no. Nope. Venice, got it already, uh, didn't make it. New Orleans, forget North America. We marked the found traveler. Say in London, we guessed it already. Number two was London. Very good. Here are the results we've got already. These are the guesses you've got right. Bangkok, number one. London, number two. Paris, number three. Missing, number four. Five is New York. We got New York. Six, Singapore. Seven is Kuala Lumpur. Eight, Istanbul. Nine was Tokyo. We're missing number 10. We're looking for uh, number 10. 11 was Hong Kong. We got it. 12, Barcelona. 13, Amsterdam. We're missing 14. We're missing. We got 15, Taipei. We got 16, Rome. We're missing 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, let's continue on. Tokyo, guessed already. Uh, didn't I already say Tokyo? Number nine, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, New York, we got uh, Ken Wilson. Really? Really? Uh, Jamie Wilson, it's huge with Chinese tourists. That's right. Uh, Kathy Butler, Istanbul, we've got it. Wendy Thompson, Cape Town, not on the list. Jim Thomas, Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S, Greece. No, not on the list. Very good guess. Mumbai, Jamie Nelson, Mumbai. Ba uh, Bombay, the old Bombay. Doesn't make the list. Doesn't make the list. Just double checking to make sure I'm not screwing up. <laughs> no, didn't make the list. Uh, Hawaii, no. Munich, no. Seoul, South Korea, yes. Seoul is number 10. Co Korean Air, 
They're 747s of them and tourists from Japan and China. Huge numbers, huge. We have no idea. We just, we just are oblivious to this. Being way over here in North America. Bali from Jamie Nelson. Very good guess, uh, but not on the list, but a very good guess. It's up there, I'm sure. Uh, New Delhi, no. Uh, Alexandria, no. Aruba, no. Sydney, no. Rio de Janeiro, no. Jakarta, oh, 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 Jakarta, Jakarta. Let me look, let me look. Jakarta, 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 Jakarta. No, Jakarta is not on the list. And that would have been a big one too. Frankfurt, no. Rio de Janeiro, no. Vienna, Vienna, yes. Vienna, number 18. Europeans can get to Vienna in and out by high speed train all day long. Yep, absolutely. Maldives, no. Cam Wilson, can I buy a vowel? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Eaton, Fiji. It's on the other side of the world. If you're watching, uh, if you're watching uh, that movie with Jim Carrey, you hold the golf ball. You're over here, and Fiji is on the other side. Not on the list. Uh, Dead boy, Debbie. Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Saigon. No, no, no. It's coming up, though. I bet you it's coming up big time. Uh, Bo Stark is asking about Lisbon. <laughs> Lisbon. Lisbon, Portugal, not on the list, but I like the guess. Jamie Nelson, this list sounds like they counted the stops at the airports. I don't know. Paul Massey or P. Massey, Dubai. Yeah, number four city, Dubai. A ton of people visit Dubai. They do the layover. You get the 72 hours free visa to stop in. Dubai is a massive place being visited from every direction from Australia, from Europe, from North America, from Asia. Yeah, a lot of people saw, kind of pass through town. True. Johannesburg, no, doesn't uh, cut it. Uh, let me see how many are left. We have one, two, three. I got four left. I have, um, I have two in Europe. I have uh, two in Asia. Okay, two in Europe, two in Asia. Forget everywhere else. Uh, Auckland, no. Uh, Barba. Paul Wilson saying, what about Barba? Yeah, that's a hot place. Uh, Paul Wilson then went on to say, uh, Bob, Barbados? Bob, Barbados. No. Bob, 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 Bob. No. Nassau, no. Auckland, New Zealand. That's a darn good guess. No. No. Auckland, New Zealand doesn't make it. Um, Sydney didn't make it. So Melbourne and Perth won't make it. Uh, forget Australia. Two in Asia, two in Europe. We're looking for Athens, Greece. No. Um, Valencia. No, no. Uh, popular place, but no. Um, let me give you, uh, if someone give me any hints here, I'm going to be careful. I don't want to give this away. These are cities we all know. Um, let's see. What, what, first of all, Doha. No. Uh, Ibiza, Ibiza. No, no. Madrid. No, no. Not, not Spain. Nothing in Portugal. Nothing in Spain. Nothing in France, not Germany, not the UK, uh, not Russia. Uh, we're narrowing the countries down, aren't we? Uh, Vietnam, Dublin, Barcelona. No, no, no. Dublin, no. Macau, no. Hong Kong, got, got Hong Kong already. Um, two Asian uh, cities. Uh, um, let me think a minute. One city's got to be 20 million. They might both be 15 to 20 million in size. Huge cities. Huge in population. Hong Kong, no. The city with the leaning tower, Pisa. No, no, that's Pisa. Pisa, Italy, no. Uh, Istanbul. Istanbul, uh, we guessed already, was number eight. Um, uh, leaning. <laughs> can't, say, can't say leaning, leaning. <laughs> learning tower of Pisa. <laughs> We're learning that it's leaning. <laughs> We've learned that it's trying to fall over. Um, Kuala Lumpur, uh, no, didn't make the cut. Um, um, but that's a big city. You got that right. Um, uh, any more hints? How can I give you a hint? One of the European cities was behind the Iron Curtain when the Iron Curtain was up. It was a Soviet dominated country. Uh, it's not anymore. Uh, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have like, 10 million people. I think this city might have two or three million, but it's a big town. Um, let's see. New Delhi. No. Tokyo, we've already got. Shanghai, we've already got. Shanghai, we've already got. 
Budapest. Uh, we guessed didn't happen. No, uh, that's one, that's a good guess for that. What I just gave you the clue. Think of another city behind the Iron Curtain other than Budapest. Is uh, is it Kuala Lumpur or is it Lumpy Koalas? It could be either way. Uh, you know, Steaming Bean, you go either way on that one. <laughs> uh, take me to a Lumpy Koalas, please. <laughs> I'd like a ticket first class to Lumpy Koalas. <laughs> Brussels. No, that, Brussels is never behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, and it isn't the second city either. Jakarta didn't make the list. Um, uh, the other city in Europe is um, is in a country. Uh, how do I say this? The other city in Europe is known as a financial center in Europe. Okay. It's a, a leading, one of the leading financial centers in Europe and also known for fashion clothing okay jakarta no east berlin no prague prague yes prague is number 20 czech republic it used to be czechoslovakia behind the iron curtain czechoslovakia prague very popular city budapest no doesn't make the cut i need one italian ooh, ooh, one italian city i gave that away already didn't mean to one city in italy that's financial and fashion oriented milan steaming bean god he caught me you caught me on that one. I, I, I gotta be so careful with you guys. Now, there are two cities left, both in Asia, okay? Uh, both around at least 10 to 20 million people. They're huge cities, massive. You've guessed Tokyo. You've guessed Beijing. You've guessed Shanghai. You've guessed, uh, oh, geez. <laughs> it is Shanghai. Uh, did anyone guess Shanghai? I, I don't think anyone's guessed Shanghai. Oh, Tommy did. Oh, Tommy, I owe you one. Uh, sorry about that. It is Shanghai. Shanghai is one of them, and it's off the list now. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm just reading it off. There's one left. One city left to go in Asia, folks. Uh, Shanghai is off the list. Uh, Asia Major or Asia Minor. Uh, hang on. Paris, Atlantis. Osaka. There it is. Osaka. Japan. You got it. This this was a good one. Um <laughs> I wrote, Stevie Bean is saying, I wrote McCann before you said Italian. <laughs> Milano, uh, Rome. Here's the final 20 list of 20. Here they are. Uh, in order, number one city, Bangkok. Number two, London. Number three, Paris. Dubai, New York, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, or Lumpy, <laughs> what's that called? Or Lumpy Koalas. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, Istanbul, Tokyo, Seoul, Hong Kong, Barcelona, Amsterdam, Milan made number 14, Taipei, Rome, Osaka, Vienna, Shanghai, Prague. No LA, no Miami, no Las Vegas, no Orlando, no San Francisco. We're puny compared to these guys. North America, we're tiny compared to these guys. We only have, what is it, America only has 350 million people? That's nothing. <laughs> There's so much space in the United States. Canada with 35 million, we're, we don't even matter. Yeah, you're talking about cities here where they are surrounded by a billion people all around them. And so it just naturally would, yeah, we can get away to, let's go to Taipei for the weekend. Let's go to Singapore for four days. So easy. Tokyo to Singapore, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Bangkok, Singapore, yeah. They just out outgun us. And that's why the Boeing Corporation is selling all of these planes, all of these 777s, all of these Dreamliners. Airbus is selling the A380, their, uh, their uh, A350 planes in bulk to these Asian countries to fly passengers 24-7 between each other. And in Europe, you've got the high-speed rail system. If you had high-speed rail in the United States, like you have high-speed rail in Europe, America would be double as rich as it is now. Double. Because it would be so easy for Americans and visitors to the United States to see the United States. Because cars, it's inefficient. Two people at a time, family of four, get on a high-speed train at 300 miles an hour. Orlando, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Jacksonville, oh my gosh, Atlanta, New York, Boston, Washington, Philadelphia. Oh, if you could connect them with high-speed rail. Oh, the West Coast, oh, Vegas, LA. Oh, if they could only get it done. But the car, the car, it's all about the car. <laughs> the 
the car actually costs us money. Rail can actually make you richer. It's it's out of our thinking though. It's right out of our out of our thinking. But Europe has got it. Europe has put it together and still building out, and it's reaping them trillions of wealth, trillions in wealth. It's incredible, just incredible. Anyway, that's what it is. Jakarta, East Berlin, and uh, Prague, Budapest. All the guesses came in. Thank you for all your guesses. Uh, uh, Cam was saying, "Wow, I would have guessed Osaka, but I, I, I didn't." Ugh. Uh, can't can't wrap my head around Bangkok. Nancy is thinking, I uh, can't either. I've been to all those except five. Jamie is saying, uh, doing all right. Uh, the trains in Japan are amazing. That's right. Look how wealthy Japan is. It's an island. It's just a puny little island. And they got what 80 million people, and they got high speed rail connecting all these centers. They have wealth equal to America as a whole. I, I mean, it's a massive economy. America is leaving money on the table. They were leaving cash on the table. And uh, a governor wants to build a high-speed rail line in one state to another. And all these residents say, oh, not through my backyard. Oh, no. You can't put that through my farm. <laughs> okay. Can't do it. Can't do it. Leaving trillions on the table. And someone has to pay those taxes. Fewer people paying taxes in the United States were in Europe and Japan. Everyone is paying taxes and much higher lifestyle, longer life expectancy. Uh, I don't want to make anybody mad, though, so you know, I, better, I better stop right there because <laughs> I'm not being telecast in Japan like I'm being telecast in the USA. And I love my American viewers. I love you guys. Uh, trains in Japan are amazing. I wish we had high-speed radar in Canada. I mean, that's one of the beefs I've got here. We're stuck, too, with the car. And we got antiquated rail and we got plane ride, you know. Two airlines here, we get hosed up here. Hosed. It's terrible. We in Canada and the USA like our cares uh, too much, our cars too much. Jamie Nelson, do you know Willie Nelson? <laughs> uh, my goodness. Paul Willigus, in the US, oil is king. We will never get high speed trains. There you go. There you go. Uh, Jamie Nelson, when I take my annual um, trip home to America, it's crazy how dependent we are on cars. It's incredible. And, uh, you know, how many people can you pack in a car? Four, five. Kind of getting tight now, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's just it's the way it is. Anyway, there you go. What a show. Uh, I had a lot of fun today. I hope I didn't bore you people out there. Uh, I hope we got a lot covered. I think we had a good time with our conversations. I am praying for all those folks with the Norwegian Sun uh, and that group on Facebook. I am in their corner hoping for the best. I will continue to expose this as best I can. When I get the facts, uh, I, I want to, you know, I want to be relevant about it. There are videos out there. I will comment one more time. There are videos out there now from certain YouTubers saying, "Oh, it's all, it's okay now. It's okay. It's all good." They went on that nightmare trip through the Panama Canal, and they got a, a credit for a free. They got a free cruise. They got a free cruise. Everything's okay now. Uh, let's go back to what we were thinking about. It's not okay now. It's not even close to okay now. Uh, I don't care if you're from the U.S., Canada, Europe, uh, uh, from Asia. You came over to the United States to get on that cruise ship. You had to get there. That cost you bucks. You probably got there the day before, maybe two days to adjust for the time change because you came from eight hours away. Uh, so you had a couple of days to adjust. That cost you money for two days hotel plus meals, transportation. You got on the ship. You paid the port charges and taxes. Uh, then you paid the tipping. Uh, now, whatever you spend on the ship, I get it. You bought a beer, you paid for it. Okay, that's that's an expense. You would have bought a beer at home, I guess. But then you had to get home, and uh, from LA, remember, from LA. Uh, and then you got home, and you went to the doctor because you got this bronchial cough or this this heavy breathing problem or skin rashes. It's from that poison you were surrounded by. That's where it's from. And it's not just the sixteen days on the Panama. It's that cruise before that, the cruise before that, the cruise before that. All those people, they're out millions. Norwegian is not given a refund, no cash back. We're keeping the cash and we're going to give you a credit on another one of our ships. Take your chances, roll the dice, take your chances and pay all those extra costs on top of this free cruise to get a free cruise. So it's not a free cruise. It's a partial deal and it's only a credit. It's not all okay. No, it isn't over. It's not all okay. And uh, Norwegian has still got to make it right. They still haven't made it right. They haven't even talked about the folks from September, from February the 2nd in Rio, uh, from Buenos Aires, from that cruise. 
All those folks were exposed, no offer. The next cruise, no offer. The Western Caribbean cruise, no offer. Only the Panama Canal cruise, because whoever squeaks the loudest gets heard. No one's talking about it. it I am, and, and it's not being mentioned on any other broadcast. I'm seeing news reports on ABC, NBC. They're not talking about the other three cruises. They're only talking about the one cruise. Lots to talk about. Okay, there we go. That's my rant for the day. My voice is almost gone. I got to rest. <laughs> <laughs> let's get the last comments through before i pack it in um <laughs> let's see uh steaming bean jamie where do you live uh kp stanovic is here kelly and kev in sunny tampa bay they're in tampa cruising tomorrow we'll try to keep in touch thanks for talking to us you caught me at the end this is great kelly have a great trip let us know how it's going uh this is fantastic i'm looking forward to monday uh i i can't wait Jamie Nelson, haha, Russia. Uh, Jamie Nelson, I am an international school teacher. Jamie Nelson, I also have lived in China. Steamy Ping, Jamie, are you a teacher? Debbie Manuel, a great chat today, everyone. Stay safe. Bye, Bruce. Jamie Nelson, yes, I am a teacher. Tammy Ray, that would be exciting, uh, Jamie. Uh, Michelle Dory, have a great day, Debbie. Uh, the Steamy Bean, I taught international for years. Randy Lucas, got to go. Headed for the spa before supper. Bye, I'll see you, Randy. Enjoy that. Wendy Thompson, unhappy passengers. Don't come back to your cruise line. That's right. Debbie Manuel, uh, you too, Michelle. Jamie Nelson, I can't imagine moving home. Can't imagine going back. Tammy Ray, Randy Lucas, rough life for Randy. Oh, he's roughing it. Stanley Bean, I moved back three years ago from, uh, from his overseas. Nancy Nolan, great show. Have a great evening, Bruce. Goodbye, all. Michelle Lucas, today is National Beer Day. How about that? National Beer Day. The Steaming Bean was overseas for 10 years. Jamie Nelson, they say that moving home is hard with reverse culture. Shock. I bet, believe it. I know it. I came back from uh, 10 years away myself. Cayman Islands for a couple of years. Palm Desert for seven years. That might have been kind of close, but still foreign. And when you come back to Canada, it's all different. It's all different. I miss Palm Desert. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Michelle, have an amazing day, friends. Great chat, Bruce. Thank you, Michelle. Peter Heckema. Bye, Bruce. Say hello to Jennifer for us. Remember to tell her she's got a hot dog coming. I will tell her. And some ice cream, that frozen yogurt, very, very Sunday. Oh, it's going to be good. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, your voice needs to rest after 13 days in a row. Um, Steaming Bean, who farted? <laughs> I got to go, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for the thumbs ups today. Let's see how many did you guys give me today. Uh, I know they were coming in. 31. I got 31 thumbs ups. Thank you all so much. If you squeeze one in before I get off the air, thank you very much. Speaking of farting, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Steam and Bean, you have a good one. Debbie, Peter, Michelle, everybody. Jim Thomas, thank you again. Good show. And thanks. Thank you, Jim Thomas. Love it. Uh, thanks for the contributions and great show, Tammy. Saying and, and thank you. I had a great time. Uh, it was fantastic. I'll see you Monday at five o'clock Eastern time, Tuesday five and eight. And uh, in the meantime, I got to go back to work and uh, post this video and get going on my research. I got work to do. I got videos to make. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a great day off. And thanks for all the comments. And I'll try to respond to anyone's comments. Uh, and if any of you have video uh, or pictures you want me to post on any videos that I'm putting together on any ship that you've ever been on, any cruise you've ever been on, drop it, uh, drop it by or, or let me know about it and uh, I'll, I'll get it off you from email or something like that and I'll post it on my videos or clips of it anyway. Um, take that anytime. Thank you all. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Wendy, take care. Uh, saying goodbye for now. Have a great weekend. Uh, it's snowing out here. Uh, unbelievable. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. We'll see you Monday at 5 Eastern. Goodbye for now. I'm out of here. See you guys. <laughs>